is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. The implant retrieval tool is sold by Nobel BioCare as a method to remove osteointegrated implants or implants that have damaged uh, connections. So what it looks like is a reverse threaded type of structure with a big hex on the end and it's this hex that's enabling you to fit something stronger into the torque wrench so you're able to generate higher torques than you usually would on the connection itself. So once you put this into the implant and reversing, it will take the implant out. So today's patient is going to be a candidate for an all-in-four upper and lower. Should we have a temporary uh, crown system on the implant now just so we can get it off so we can make this uh, occur fast. Here we can see that the upper is planned to have 15 millimeters of space because we put the lower in we can see we have 15 millimeters of prosthetic space here. And it's this prosthetic space that's used for both up, upper and lower arches so that titanium bars can be made and the components can all fit in and have structural strength. If you're going to do an all-in-four it may be necessary to remove some of the single implants and then place implants higher so that you'll have the prosthetic space required to finish the case. So here we've frozen the case. We're going to take the implant retrieval tool and then spin this into the implant backwards. So it has a backward thread that kind of grabs into the, the screw channel of the implant, enables you to really have a friction fit that is uh, very, very tight, enabling you to really put a high torque. So the, the more you torque this, the, the more this grabs into the implant. So when you place it into the implant, you're going to see the hex sticking out, and this hex will enable you to use your torque wrench to kind of torque this backwards in a, in a counterclockwise manner to just unscrew the implant. So you take your torque wrench, slide it down over this large hex, so you're bypassing the connection. So t many times the connection can be damaged or, or hooped as they say, so it's kind of spread apart. But this is actually going right into where the screw channel, into the core of the implant itself. And being in the core, this is going to enable you to generate really, really high forces. So once the torque wrench is on, you want to make sure that the screw is going in an, an anti-rotational, so a counterclockwise way. So you can see there, it's releasing right there. So the implant releases, and then that's uh, enabling us to unscrew the implant. So osseo integration has now been reversed, and the implant just screws out just as if you were going to take it out at the time of uh, uh, placement. So it's a great tool to have in your kit because then you can just let things heal or you can actually go in now and do an all-in-four if you wanted to to place the implant. You can see this is kind of fuse welded into the implant and hard to get out actually use wrenches to get it off but I would just use a new one on each time you try to get the implant out because it's worth it to have these in your office when you need them. So our example number two is a damaged implant which needs removal. So during an all-in-four procedure, I got a little bit overzealous and I was torquing down an implant for an all-in-four placement. And one of the posterior implants, I, I kind of put a little bit too much pressure on it and the top of the hex uh, was damaged. You can see here, so we can't leave this to be damaged like this. This is hooped out and, and fractured actually. So you take the implant removal tool, you go to the same uh, kind of thing as the first case and we can see here that I put this inside the implant, uh, screw it backwards, and then I'm able to just basically unscrew the implant because this isn't even osseointegrated, but it's in there pretty tight, and I can't fix any fit anything over the hex because the hex has been damaged. So you just unscrew the implant and then you go back and place other implants and finish the all in four case. So it's a, a great way to get this job done. You can see here, but then we can get the all in four finished and uh, get things situated for the patient. Our third and final case is kind of an interesting case. The implants have been integrated for 10 years approximately. The patient's going to have an all-in-four because of some failing posterior teeth, but she originally had some locators in the anterior part of her mouth for the partial attachments to posterior teeth. The posterior teeth are now gone. So we're going to raise a flap and notice that the implant is not in really great shape here. A lot of buckle bone missing. So we're going to take this out. So we try to see if we can just get underneath it. Here's the partial she'd been wearing, but these teeth are long gone and we have to go to an all-in-four situation. So going to an all-in-four, we want to gain some of the prosthetic space back. 
by making the implants go a little bit deeper. We'll take the locator abutment saw first and this will enable us to get to the implant head. So we can try one of the implant drivers which is usually a good idea first to see if we can avoid using a retrieval tool. So we put this in especially where this has some bone loss around it and we're going to try to break the integration. So you're going to hear a little click here in a second when this integration actually breaks. So we just kind of try to engage the uh, driver some pressure on it, keep it kind of rotating in a very kind of axial direction. And there's the crack. So that's the integration breaking because there's still a fair bit of integration occurring on this implant even though there's some bone loss occurring. So we'll take this out using the torque wrench. So that was a kind of an easy one. Our next one's going to be a bit tougher to get out because it's a fully integrated implant. The second implant was a bit better positioned, so it actually was protected and uh, still has a lot of bone around it. So we tried the implant driver, but this is just not working. It's not able to get that implant out of the out of the bone. So we go to the implant retrieval tool next from Nobel BioCare, and we're going to take this because it has a nice big hex, a generous hex, and take it and put it into the implant and do a reverse kind of torquing on the implant. So we'll get the gold torque wrench, which is a little bit beefier, so that we're able to put a lot of force. I'm going to try to engage this in. As I'm going in, the implant's not moving. It's just kind of engaging down in the screw channel. And you can see I'm starting to build more torque, but it's still not moving that implant. Even though there's some movement, this is just the tool engaging in the base of the implant. So I try to do a little bit more, put a little more, more torque on it. It's just not making this implant move. This is really quite integrated and uh, this is just not going to do the trick. So the implant's not budging at all. It's just kind of making my tool slip a little bit. So I'm worried about my torque wrench. You can see my torque wrench is letting go there, which is not really let great for the torque wrench itself, but uh, I'm not able to do it this way. So sometimes this retrieval tool needs a little bit of help. We take the retrieval tool out by going in a clockwise fashion. We want to get it out of the way so that we can do some more work around the implant to see if we can get this out without doing too much damage to the bone. So I just take it and get it right out of the way and I'm going to put it aside for a few minutes and then come back to it after we do a little bit of crustal bone work. So my goal is to take a trefine and do the top five millimeters of the implant so I can get this a little bit uh, loosened up and then go back in and use the retrieval tool. So we'll take the trefine and go down over the top, which is going to be bone we're going to remove anyway because we have to remove about 5 millimeters of bone. And we start to take a little bit of this crestal bone, which seems to be the bone that really integrates the most with the implant through the torque and pressure on this area. So once we get this bone removed, then uh, we're able to go back in and we're going to take the retrieval tool and place it back into the implant. So we're going to engage this by going counterclockwise again, get back to where I was before, but now with that integration of some of the implant, this is a 13 millimeter implant, so 5 millimeters has been taken away. Now we're able to start to try to see if we can get this backed out. So I'll put some torque on the implant and reverse it. So still clicking a little bit, but by holding it tighter to the act of force, we can actually unscrew the implant. So you see it releases, so it's fantastic. We get this moving, and then we can reduce this ridge and get an implant in a little bit deeper, so we'll have that prosthetic space that we need. So it really grabbed on quite nicely, but you can see how nicely this integration was going on. Now we'll reduce the ridge and go back in and finish the all on four get the prosthetic space we need and then replace the implants at a little bit deeper level which will enable us to have the titanium bar and the multi-unit attachments and all the things needed for all in four. This is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube presentation about implant dentistry.